Lennies and Bunny lovers, welcome back to the channel. Today I have a special guest with me, Vicki from AdoptABunnyRabbit.org, who you guys see quite often, and Precious Snowflake here. She is uh, an English or French Angora? Not quite sure, but it's one or the other. Anyway, she's huge, look at this, and she's really due for a grooming. So I thought it'd be really cool to show you guys kind of from start to finish the whole process of this bunny spa day and um, Snowflake here getting her bunny makeover. She's gonna get uh, trimmed, sheared, she's gonna get a bunny manicure, she's gonna get her scent glands cleaned and um, yeah, we're gonna walk you guys through the whole thing. Unfortunately, Snowflake was surrendered by her owners, so she is looking for a home, and Vicki uh, was kind enough to rescue her. She is a diva girl. She loves her pats. She is a lovable, warm, friendly, big personality bunny. I think this video is also important because it just goes to show, you know, a lot of people want Angoras or lion heads and some of these like vanity breeds, but you know, they're actually quite a bit of work in this grooming process. It requires a lot of patience, so um, it is important for you guys to see that as well. All right, so let's get to it. Mm -hmm. so, so these are the clippers for the nails. They're just like any cat or dog clippers. Um, the best kind or the simplest kind. And then I have a nail file to file the nails because um, when I cut the nails with these clippers, usually the nails get jagged. This helps them to, to be smooth, which is nice for them and nice for you when you pick up the bunny. Then there's Q-tips for cleaning out the scent glands. Um, and you have and some treats there. We have some treats here to keep the bunnies happy. Glasses if you don't like hair getting into your eyes. The shears, we're gonna try those out soon. The shears we're using today have a 4F. I don't know if that's gonna be good, but we're trying that. Sometimes we use a 10. And then these are just uh, bottles of stuff to clean the blades and to keep your blades cool because um, sometimes the shears can get hot as you're using them. So um, Vicky's just picking out bits and pieces of hay that have gotten caught in Snowflake's fur. And uh, you're kind of like demattifying. I'm looking where the mats are and uh, where the thickness of them is because I'm gonna try to cut it right from the thickness. And we also want to remind you guys um, not to try this at home. Um, you know, this really requires a certain level of expertise and knowledge to do without harming the bunny. Um, so we always recommend going to either a rabbit rescue or a professional bunny groomer who can take care of this for you if you're not sure how to do it. So right now you're trimming the fur. I'm trimming the fur. Before you actually shear it because right. you don't want... Well, the shears won't go through this much. Okay. Um, unless you have magic shears, which I don't. Um, so I'm taking the length off of it so that I can just uh, shear then what's underneath. So now when you're doing this end, the tail looks just like part of the rest of the hair and it's very easy to snip, snip and snip that tail right off. When I'm doing around the tail area, I'll take the tail and I'll tuck it underneath her legs like that and I'll keep my hand there so that it doesn't pop back up again so that I'm not going to get near cutting her tail. As you can see, it's really, when it's going, coming out like this, it's, it's a mold because this hair is not even hardly attached anymore because the new coat that's underneath that's coming out is pushing this hair out. That's why it's so easy to pull it out. If it's not easy to pull, it's not ready to come out. I pluck Lennon all the time when she's molting. It's like one of my pet peeves. Like she's one of those bunnies. You'll never ever see her with you pluckable. Out, you, just like you will it. never see Lennon with any pluckable fur in public. Like she... <laughs> <laughs> like, I just will not allow it. <laughs> like, I see, like, some owners, like, leave their bunnies, like... I know. Like, skirt. Because that's skirt. I'm just like, um, can you please pluck this? <laughs> like, what? Can you comb your bunny, please? Yeah. The 
hard part is when you get around the limbs. It's a really smooth cut. It is nice, yeah. And she's being really calm. She's being so good. Probably feels a little bit like a massage. to do this um, you would do a bunny shear I would do it every three months so four times a year um, that's a lot it's a lot but you don't have to do it that many times um, but for the bunny you know if the bunny's hot they feel better without the fur mm -hmm. and because angoras were made to shear for their fur they don't necessarily like having that much fur we love looking at them when they're beautiful like that but they really don't feel that comfortable with all that fur. This is like a sheep. Yeah. It's like a little sheep, but sheep are much easier to shear. When you do a sheep, you go strip and it comes off because they're not as dense of a fur as bunnies have the densest fur of all animals. If you take a square inch of bunny and compare it to a square inch of cat or dog, there's way more hairs on that inch on a bunny than on the others. So she's going through a pretty heavy molt right now. How many times a year do the bunnies molt? Uh, in a normal place where there's uh, four seasons, they would molt twice. They would um, have a summer coat and a winter coat. It can be dangerous during during the heat, right? Yes, it's very dangerous in the heat, because, especially for angoras. It gets so hot. Bunnies can't sweat except for out. Uh, they have sweat glands only in their ears. Now, this position is a very vulnerable position for the bunny, and it should only be done when necessary, right? right? Yeah, they don't like to be on their back. It's uh, it's they they feel very uh, insecure and uh, not safe. Uh, so so it's not something they're comfortable with. But you have to do it to um, to get to their groin and tummy area. But yeah, you want to get it done and just uh, let them get back on their feet again. And you're also doing the paws. That's really cute. Just a little bit on the paws. They probably never get sore hocks, huh? They don't. They shouldn't get sore hocks. That's mostly what they walk on. But the but the hair on their feet is what protects them because they don't have pads. So you never want to cut off too much hair. You just mm. I'm just cutting off the dirty part where she's been sitting in her litter box and getting pee on them and stuff. So that because when she cleans her feet, I don't want her to have to taste all that yucky stuff. And this. The genitals are right here in this little circle at the base of the tail, and then the scent glands are on either side, here and here. So I'm gonna open one scent gland, just gently with a Q-tip. You can clean it out pretty good with a Q-tip. Doesn't have to be totally, totally empty. Just wanna get all the darker stuff out because the darker stuff ends up being sticky and gluing that scent gland together, which you don't want. And there's the other side. Yep. All right, I'm just finishing up cutting some of the hair off of her feet. And um, her nails are atrocious, and we're going to cut them right now. There's four nails on her back foot. There's one. You can see the quick because her nails are very white. Um, there is. There you are. And this one is. Oh my goodness gracious. I also file Lennon's nails. You do? Yeah. I think they like it. I think they do too. So the last thing I usually do is check their ears just to make sure they're clean, healthy, with no mites in them. I can't look down deep into them without a tool or instrument, but I can see pretty much down to where there would be mites if she had them. So they're both clean and clear, and uh, you're looking good. We're looking good.